Hello everybody and welcome to a new video and welcome to my channel where we talk about everything music from death metal to queen and everything in between. On today's video we'll talk about a subject that is very often overlooked and it could potentially save your life. So let's check it out. As some of you may know, I actually just recently moved into a house. It's an old house, very comfortable. It's got a backyard, it's got a front yard. It's really cool. But it had been vacant for a long time, about five to six years. Definitely a fixer upper. So of course, when I first moved in, I found a lot of plumbing issues. And also very importantly, I found a lot of electrical issues. And that's what we're going to talk about today, the electrical issues. Okay, so I told the story briefly in the channel, but in case you missed it, a couple of days ago, I was actually just walking around the house, doing my own thing, and I started to smell this, you know, very distinctive smoke smell, very plasticky smell. And I started sniffing around the house, and I found that one of the outlets was actually on fire. Of course, I freaked out, I shut off the power, and I got rid of the outlet. I figured, you know, it's a bad outlet, it's an old house, things are bound to happen. A few more days go by and the same thing happened on a different outlet. Again, fire and sparks everywhere. I was like, what the hell? A lot of smoke. So I started snooping around and doing research and I found out that the electrical issue actually went way beyond a simple outlet. So I really hope that you guys can learn from my experience. So I will tell you about all the stuff that I had to do to the house and all the stuff that you should be on the lookout if you're going to move into a new place or if you're thinking about adding a recording studio to your place it's definitely something worth looking into okay so first of all once you get into the electric box the electronic box there should be a couple of breakers okay so there's two different kinds of circuit breakers you have your thermal breakers and your radio breakers a thermal breaker is designed to protect your cables not yourself the cables which means that when the cable starts to get really hot it'll trip and that way it'll shut off power going through that line and you will get no more electricity going through the cable so that it can cool off. Now the other breaker is designed to save your life. And the way it works is that it sends out the electricity and then expects it back. So if you're actually grounding the cable, if you touch the live wire and you're grounding the cable, the electricity is effectively going into the ground and not going back into the box. So as soon as it realizes that the electricity is going somewhere else, it'll shut off completely, hopefully saving your life. Okay, so in Europe and some South American countries, you'll see the breakers look like this. And this will mean it's on and this is off. And it shuts off automatically when something is wrong. And they are rated. This guy is rated for 25 amps. The higher the rating, the more appliances you can actually connect to that circuit. Most appliances will tell you how much amps they need to work. Like your water heater, your stove, your fridge. But amplifiers don't really do that. Don't worry about it because there's a very easy mathematical equation you can use to know how many amps you need. Depending upon your location, the volts are going to be different. Like in the United States, you have 110 volts, and in the UK, you have 230. So what you have to do then is divide the watts on the volts, and that will equal to the amps. For example, let's say you have an electrical water heater that runs at 2300 watts. You have to divide that onto the volts. So let's say in your country, you have 220 volts, then that'll be 2300 watts divided into 220 volts. And that equals to roughly about 10 amps. But of course, we're just going to give it one more just in case. So we'll do 11 amps instead. Okay, so that's what you need to have on your breaker. You need to have 11 or more amps. Now, the more appliances you have on the one breaker, the more things that can go wrong. So you want to have as many breakers as possible and as many lines as possible. That way, let's say you have your water heater and an air conditioning and a guitar amplifier on the same breaker and one of them is shorting out or anything, then you can't really use any of them. So if you had three different lines, then of course you can, you know, let's say the water heater is the one that's shorting out, you can still use the amplifier and the air conditioning, no problem. Now, of course, we can't have a breaker for everything that we own. So we need to stack them up as neatly and as best as possible. But we also have to make sure that we have the right cable for the job. And that's a very important part of this video. Okay, so when I first moved into the house, it only had two circuit breakers and they were thermal circuit breakers, which meant that of course it wasn't going to save my life, but it was supposed to trip if the cable got too hot. Now, if you've been paying attention, then you remember that I told you that two of my outlets actually caught on fire and the breaker never tripped. So why, what happened? Here's what happened, the cable wasn't the right cable for the job. Just like with the circuit breakers, where we have different apps and different ratings, we also do that with cables. We have different gauges, which are the thickness of the cable, and they're rated for different amps as well. 
So if you have a circuit breaker with 25 amps on it, then you need a cable that can withstand the power of 25 amps. If you have a 32 amp breaker, then you need a cable, a thicker cable that can withstand 32 amps. And if you have a 15 or a 10 amp breaker, then you can get away with a very slim cable, which was not the case here. And that's what happened, and that's why it caught on fire. This guy is designed to trip if it goes over 25 amps, or, you know, the equivalent in heat. But these guys were rated for 15 amps only. No! So they started to get hot, and they got up to the breaking point of 15 amps, and the breaker never tripped. So it kept on going, and it kept on getting hot, and hot, and hotter, and hotter. And that's why they caught on fire and this guy never even noticed it so yeah you need to make sure that your cable and your breaker are rated for the same amount of power so yeah what a mess so now i actually have four thermal breakers instead of the original two and of course the breaker that's going to save my life so i have five different electrical breakers going into the house at the same time and so to do that i have to get rid of all of the cable in the house and replace it with new cable so this is some of the cable that i got off of the wall and I gotta tell you, this cable is really lousy. Because these cables, these are Chinese cables, and they're really, really bad. So I had to buy new cables and replace all these cables with these cables. But they look the same, don't they? Well, that's how they get you. First of all, make sure when you buy cables that they are approved by whatever entity you have in your country. You know, safety codes and stuff like that. And it will be stamped onto the cable itself. So that's the first thing I will look into. But of course, the Chinese have a way of stamping things that shouldn't be there. Chipson, anyone? So yeah, if you're not too sure about your cables, I would definitely recommend that you grab them and you weigh them. This much cable is almost as heavy as this much cable. And that's saying something. Of course, you might not have access to a roll of your cable that's in your wall. Okay, so at that point, I would recommend that you take a look at a couple of things. First of all, let's compare these two cables. This is the regular good cable, this is the Chinese cable. Now take a look at that. See how flimsy that is? You can't probably tell, but this is very bendy. This is very rubbery. And this, it's really hard to bend. It's not as easy. Now second of all, make sure it's copper. How do we know if it's copper? If you look at this, it's very coppery. It's, very, it's got a very distinctive, very shiny gold slash red color to it. This one, however, is not as shiny. It's a little bit dull. And look at the amount of cable in there. That's ridiculous. This is the same gauge cable as this, supposedly. But look at how much more cable you have. Yeah, this is a lot easier to work with. But you know, it breaks off really easy. Now, why is this a lot more shiny than the other one? Why is this more coppery than this? Well, basically, this one is all copper. And this has got a lot of aluminum in it. That's what makes it so light as well. And aluminum, it's not safe. It'll catch on fire really quick and it'll break really easily. And last but not least, and very important, this is like rubber, it's more of a, I don't really know what it is, but the sleeve itself is not as good. This sleeve, it's, it's like PVC, it's like pipe. It's very plasticky and it protects the copper a lot better and of course it protects you a lot better because if you had a nick in there and you had exposed copper and you touch it it'll shock the hell out of you this this will get nicked for nothing and also this is flame retardant this is supposed to not catch on fire ever this i know for a fact it catches on fire. All right, guys, so I really wanted to do a really quick video and show you some tips and tell you why electrical cable is so important as part of your studio setup. So I really hope that you can learn something from my experience. And if you had any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, guys, I still got to finish the job. So we'll see you guys next time. Pat out, metal on, dudes. Take care.